when you start looking into AI, it's a very powerful tool that can create and that can destroy anything that we have believed. What is AI? This is the question that has been running across millions of minds in the world. Data scientists across the world can use the data to train the machine and make predictions and inference on the relationships altogether. AI is basically on two parts. One is the natural language processing, the capability of a computer to interpret written or spoken kind of language and respond altogether. Good morning and welcome to the first session in third semester BCA Artificial Intelligence in Unit 1, Chapter 1, Session 1, where we're going to talk about the introduction to artificial intelligence. Probably AI is the word that actually dominates the world today. Has there been a technology that has been so powerful, able to change the mankind, able to change the dynamics of workspace today, that's none other than this two letter artificial intelligence. Now, when you start looking into AI, it's a very powerful tool that can create and that can destroy anything that we have believed. Now, AI is the creation of software that imitates human behaviors and capabilities. So the first thing is that if I'm going to create something exactly like you, if I'm going to talk about a software that can depict each and every behavior of a human being, that's none other than artificial intelligence. We've always talked about the natural intelligence of a human being, but today we are going to talk about artificial intelligence, something which is just like you, but not you. Now let's try going into it, where we're going to talk about the key workloads, where we're going to talk about the machine learning. This is often the foundation of the AI system, but the way we are going to teach the computer how to model, to make the prediction and draw conclusion from the data. The anomaly detection, normally the capability to detect errors that we are going to see in the system. Then we're going to talk about computer vision, the capability of a software to interpret the visually world through cameras and other detection factors. Now moving further, what is AI? This is the question that has been running across millions of minds in the world. Now AI is basically on two parts. One is the natural language processing, the capability of a computer to interpret written or spoken kind of language and respond altogether. Now we know that in India, there are thousands and thousands of languages that have been spoken across. Not every language has been understood by everybody and we don't speak the same language in every corner of our country. Now, when you talk about the globe, there are hundreds and thousands of language. But what is that we want the computer to understand? We want the computer to understand the same language, the same rhythm, the diction and the power through which you will be able to understand what is the response altogether. So that's exactly where the natural language processing comes into picture. Now the second thing is called as knowledge mining. The knowledge mining is the capability to extract information from large volumes, often from unstructured data to create a searchable, knowledgeable store. Now that is exactly where AI is coming into picture. The knowledge mining is a capability to extract information. Now you need to take information from different corners and bring out the best solution when the user is seeking it. So that's definitely one of the most important areas that we would be speaking about. Now followed by what is machine learning system. Now the machine learning from the data and to make prediction and draw conclusions from the data. Now the machine learning is the foundation of most of the AI solution. So whatever AI solutions that we are talking about today is the foundation comes in from there. So now when you talk about this, it is used to make the prediction and draw conclusions. So that's where you would be able to see that whatever answers that you are getting in your chat GPT or any other 
AI model, the base is your machine learning system. Now, data scientists across the world can use the data to train the machine and make predictions and inference on the relationships altogether. So what is happening now is that data scientists across the world are trying to make a connection, trying to understand how to use the data and how to train the machine so exactly they would be able to get the predictions that are needed. Now let me take an example here. Let us say that I want to know about the behavior of the stock market tomorrow. Now tomorrow being a particular day of a week, now I want to know will the markets go up or down? Will the index will be on a particular side? What would be the levels when I'm talking about nifty or bank nifty or any other kind of things? Definitely I can use an AI model and try to predict with an algorithm what pattern of trading would be available tomorrow. So that's exactly where I'm trying to bring in the machine learning concept altogether so that you would be able to make the prediction and inferences altogether. Now, machine learning in Microsoft Azure, now this is the platform that we are talking about, it has got the Azure machine learning service, a cloud-based platform for creating, managing, publishing, all those kinds of model. Now, Azure machine learning provides the following features and capabilities. Now, let's see. First one is the anomaly detection. That means to say that it analyzes the data over a time and identifies unusual changes. So let's say I'm going to talk about the behavior of a consumer using his credit card pattern. Now, normally we know that credit card is one of the trap for most of the consumers. Why? Because it financially drains you out. It puts you to a situation where you might be trapped because of less money altogether. But nevertheless, the credit card is one thing that has become very popular with the consumer purchases today. The retail behavior is completely dependent on credit card. So I might use this AI to detect if there are any fraudulent transactions that are going on with the credit cards. Now, when I talk about computer vision, that's the area of AI that deals with visual processing. Now, there is nothing much more beautiful than the vision that we look into it. Everything that you look around has got some meaning, has got some value, has got something which has an enhanced vision altogether. That's really something beautiful, which cannot be just described in words. Now, that's exactly the power which we are going to give to the computer using this computer vision. Now, what does vision exactly do? It narrates the world around you. Now, imagine for a while that you want to visit the Eiffel Tower in Paris, you want to visit the Niagara Falls, or you want to visit the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, or you want to go and visit the Golden Gate of San Francisco. Just imagine for a moment that you have been taken on a guided tour with an AI machine that's able to tell you each and every dimension of the place that you wanted to visit. Now that's exactly the power of AI, bringing the world closer to you, bringing that reality through virtual communication. That's exactly where AI spells magic into the minds of consumer. So now, for example, the Seeing app is what got a great power vision together. Today, when people talk about the virtual world altogether, it's not exactly virtual. It's something where you are going to bring the reality as close as possible. So if I want to watch a cricket match as close as possible, I want to see how the batting is going on, how the bowling is going on in the match and using an AI powered vision, I would be able to experience the same feeling sitting right in the middle of the stadium. So that's exactly the power of vision when we are talking about AI. Now the common computer vision task, the first thing is I'm going to talk about image classification which involves training of machine model languages based on the images and their contents. So probably you might use this classification to classify the different kinds of images based on type of vehicle or the movements or the person, all those factor. Object detection which is used to train the individual objects. Example in traffic monitoring, you will be able to see the number of cars moving in, persons moving in the head count, uh, what kind of vehicle, the chassis number and all those kind of things. Yes, I'm going to bring in this object detection methodology. Next, I move on to something called a semantic segmentation. Let me just spend a minute on this. Why? Because the word semantic is all about when we talk about the mask layers of highlighting different vehicles.
vehicles using specific colors, which means uh, images are classified according to the object they belong. I'm not going to do a classification just like that, but I'm going to classify them into groups that are closely related. So I want to understand the number of SUVs that pass through a particular signal in the streets of Mysore or Bangalore or anywhere in Karnataka or anywhere in India for that matter. I can use the semantic segmentation altogether. Similarly, I want to identify a particular vehicular movement. I want to identify, let's say, the movement of two wheelers on a particular road, on a particular highway. Yes, that is possible with a semantic classification altogether. So definitely, AI is proving that it has got a great amount of prowess in terms of making the human ideology move further. Now, let's talk about image analysis. Now, this is the combination of image and trying to extract information, including the tags that could help over that particular thing. So you will get a descriptive image altogether. I think most of you might be seeing through your Instagram reels and other things. When the image comes with its own self description, you're able to read it, you're able to analyze and take it forward. So that's one of the most fantastic thing. Face deduction, yes, this is something which is very, very important. Why? Because it locates the human faces in an image. There's a facial geometry technique. Now, let's, if you start go, getting into any spy movies or any kind of thriller movies or action movies, you would have seen that using these facial deduction, they are able to detect people who are actually absconding. And uh, in fact, this is one of the most important techniques that has been used by worldwide agencies in terms of understanding the facial geometry altogether followed by which the optical character recognition so when you're going to talk about certain texts which are highlighted with a special kind of ink with a special kind of calligraphy you're going to bring in the optical character recognition methodology that's going to take the photographs take in front what are the factors what are the features and go forward in terms of understanding it so definitely this is a very very important method that we are going to learn in the coming days so optical character recognition is definitely making a big sense a big inroad altogether now we're going to talk about something called as nlp that's called as natural language processing altogether. The NLP is an area of AI that deals with creating software that talks about written and spoken language. This is the human factor I'm trying to bring in and this enables you to create a software that can interpret text, email messages, which is very important today, synthesize the speech content altogether. Whenever I talk about the speech responses or content, you're able to synthesize it and you're able to take it automatically. Now, the most important thing, again, coming back, it's able to translate spoken written faces between the languages. It is able to interpret the commands altogether, determine the appropriate action. So I would definitely say Microsoft Assure, you can use the following cognitive services to build the natural processing language processing services altogether. So this is definitely a highlighted factor which I would like to talk upon. Very, very important for all of us to understand in the coming days. Now, followed by which the knowledge mining that we are talking about. Knowledge mining is a term that is used to describe the solutions that are involving in extracting information as we have told about. It's a combination of intelligent services to quickly learn from huge amount of information. Now, if I ask you to describe about the pyramids of Giza, now that's not going to be an easy question for you. Why? Because we are not that much adept in terms of historical de definitions or historical ages altogether. So what happened hundreds and thousands of years back, we might not know. But an AI has got the capability to condense all that information, extract exactly what the consumer wants and present it to you in the most concise manner. So that's exactly where we are going to talk about the knowledge mining. The knowledge mining combines the capacity of extracting information, giving it to you in the most simple, precise manner so that you don't have to go through the volumes of data. You don't have to get confused with the different denominations, definitions or textual contents and other factors together. All you need is a simple solution and AI is there to give you that best solution altogether. Similarly, when we are coming about the cognitive search, it can use an inbuilt 
capability of searching your image processing content of natural language processing checking it all together nowadays i would just like to add on an example here when we talk about google lens all you have to scan using that particular app and you are getting the right information right at your fingertips so that's exactly the power of an ai powered solution that we are talking about in the modern search engine optimization now with this, I would like to come to the conclusion of today's session. I hope and believe that all the contents that have been spoken here today would be of a great help and reference to you in the exam as well as in the practical walk of life. In the upcoming sessions, we will start trying to understand the various contents of AI. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.